Welcome to the presentation working with surface mount technology. I'm Alt Beer and I'm going to walk you through this presentation. Um, the presentation is available to download at altbeer.us slash SMT. So what is surface mount technology? Well, surface mount technology or SMT for short is a method in which electrical components are mounted directly onto the surface of a printed circuit board. Um, the electrical components mounted that in this manner are called surface mount devices or SMD. Um, an SMT component is usually smaller than its through hole component counterpart um, because it either has much smaller leads or no leads at all. In commercial applications, um, this approach has largely replaced through hole technology um, in large part because SMT allows for increased manufacturing automation, which reduces cost and improves quality. Let's talk about some of the common abbreviations used in SMT. So SMT, as I explained, was um, surface mount technology. Um, this generally refers to anything regarding surface mounts, but more specifically can refer to the assembling and mounting technology used. Um, SMD are surface mount devices. These can be active, passive, and electromechanical components, just like uh, any uh, component we would use on our circuit board. SMC um, is another term um, referring to those components, that's surface mount components. SMP is surface mount packages. Uh, this is referring to the actual case forms of the surface mount components, not the packaging they, they come in when they're shipped. Um, SMA is surface mount assembly, and S SME is surface mount equipment. This could be our assembling machines. Let's talk about surface mount packages. So um, the surface mount components come in many different sizes and shapes. And here we're going to walk through the different categories of surface mount packages. And note the term package or packages here is referring to the case forms and not delivery packaging, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Um, so the first type that we're going to talk about is the flat chip. Um, these are simple flat chip components. I have a, a picture of one here. Um, that are, are used. They're typically like resistors, capacitors, things that are, are passive um, that, that can easily be um, put into this uh, rectangular form. The next is a, a MELF. A MELF is a, a metal electrode face bonded component. And these are typically capacitors, although I think I have seen some other um, types of components using MELF technology for the, the packaging. Um, but yeah, typically capacitors use MELF. Then we have um, tantalum. Tantalum are capacitors. I've never seen anything other than capacitors using um, the tantalum molding process. And there's a, a diagram of one there. Uh, SOT refers to small outline transistors. Um, and there's a number of different form factors of uh, SOT, the most popular being the, the SOT23, which is pictured here. Then we have SOIC. SOIC, the small outline integrated circuit, um, is a whole family of package types that are for integrated circuits. Um, and so you can see in the picture to the left here, we have a, a bunch of them that we'll go through um, in, a, in a slide to come. Um, PLCC is the plastic lead, uh, leaded chip carrier. So the plastic leaded chip carrier, this is um, uh, for a, a chip to have um, J-wings um, uh, leads all around it. And these are typically um, socketed chips. So it's something that you would plug a chip into a, a socket for. Um, and then LCC are leadless chip carriers. So these chips have no leads on them at all. They just have contact points. And then we have flat pack or plastic carriers that have flat leads that usually come straight out the sides, um, which will be then formed to the shape they need to be formed by an automation machine as it's putting it onto the board. Um, QFP, which is a quad flat pack, 
um, is not referring to the flat pack leads, um, but more a whole family of um, uh, circuit um, uh, layouts or package layouts rather um, for um, chips. So these are um, quad um, leaded, meaning they ha will have connections on all four sides and they come in a variety of, of different um, connection types. And these are, are uh, QFPs are uh, very widely used uh, on circuit boards. And then ball grid array or BGAs, um, these are exactly what they sound like. Um, the, the leads, um, if you can call them that, are simply balls on the bottom of a chip. Um, so as the, the package is put together with the chip, um, it'll have a bunch of metal balls on there um, that are used um, when socketing a chip to make contacts um, where it needs to be contacted. So now we'll talk about surface mount packaging. So this is the actual packaging that um, encompasses the components. Um, and surface mount components come delivered in several different types of packaging. Um, all of the packaging is usually designed to allow for automation tools, such as pick and place machines to make use of, of these components with minimal human intervention. Um, two of the most common package types are the um, tape and reel system, um, where the surface mount components um, sit inside a, a tape that's a special separation tape. It, um, it, it has um, uh, two parts that can be peeled away to expose the component um, that an automation machine can, can handle. Um, and then they're fed on a reel that would be put into whatever that automation machine is. And the, the reels and the, the um, tape come in various materials, including um, plastic and paper being the, the most popular. Um, the next uh, type of packaging that's most commonly used is the tube. Um, and that's where your surface mount component is going to be um, inside of a plastic slide tube. Um, this is typically used for the um, IC or, or chip type components um, where the slide tube is going to be designed to, to handle the pins and allow um, the chips to be pushed through the tube as that tube is mounted onto a machine that is going to use it. So let's talk about um, some of the, the packages in a little more detail. So the flat chip um, surface mount package type um, includes uh, ceramic capacitors, um, resistors, and diodes. Um, and flat capacitors, um, which are pictured here on the right, they tend not to have any markings. So you have to be careful not to mix up the different um, capacitive value types if you're working with multiple types of capacitors like different farad values. Um, so there's no markings on those usually to indicate like what the farad value is. Flat resistors, however, are marked with a number code that should tell you what the resistance value of that resistor is. And in this code, they use the letter R to indicate a decimal place. And so I have a chart here on the right that is showing um, the, the different codes used, whether it's a three digit code or a four digit code, and how you would tell what resistance value that equals. So diodes, um, including uh, light emitting diodes, um, tend to have markings that will indicate the anode and the cathode so that you know the proper position to put those um, components in place. These markings um, are not standardized and they differ um, by product and manufacturer. So we have some examples of those markings here. Um, it could be a, a simple dot on, on one end of it, or it could be a T with the, the um, bottom end of the T pointing to the cathode. Um, it could be a, a triangle with um, one of the tips of the triangle pointing at the cathode, or a line or lines on the cathode side. Um, one thing that the manufacturers have been uh, uh, pretty consistent about doing is whatever marking they're putting on the LEDs, um, it tends to try to identify which end is the cathode. So it's going to point at the cathode or it's going to have a mark on the cathode. And that'll give you a, a direction to, to place it in. 
Now, flat chips um, come in many different sizes, and there's a nomenclature that will denote the size of the, the SMD um, in either inches or millimeters. Um, so we have a chart here that explains that. So you'll have, um, for example, an uh, 0805 um, chip is um, referencing an imperial um, code of, of inches, and that uh, corresponds to 0 0.08 inches by 0 0.05 inches. And so that's the, the length and width of the chip. It does not measure height, which most of them are, are fairly um, thin and not too high. Um, some of the ceramic, ceramic capacitors can, can get um, pretty high, as well as LEDs, depending upon the, the LED type. Um, but for the most part, these are thin components, and we're only measuring length and width. Um, so like a 1206 would be uh, 0.12 inches by 0 0.06 inches. Um, and then there's uh, also metric codes that may be used. And so based on the, the value that's on uh, the nomenclature, you can tell what the size of um, the, the component is and also the, the footprint type, like how you're going to, um, if you're designing PCBs, how you're going to have to place the um, solder contact pads on the PCB um, to handle this component. So let's look at um, the SOICs. This is the small outline IC package type. Um, small outline ICs are a whole family of packages with a variety of, of lead styles and lead counts. The small outline packages um, can be called by many different names based on, on their type. Um, and there's small differences between each type. And sometimes they're called by the wrong name because of this. Um, so the typical nomenclature is to call out the SOIC package type followed by a number, which is the number of pins on that package. So for example, SOP 16 would be a small outline package with 16 pins. Um, and because these packages tend to have um, pins on, on both sides of uh, the chip, that would mean it has eight pins on each side of the chip. Um, with the exception of, of quad packages, all of these package types are pinned on two, two sides only. So the SO or SOP, which are used interchangeably, um, this is the original name for small outline packages. Um, and this is um, uh, a molded plastic case that's um, approximately um, 3.97 millimeters wide, so about 4 millimeters wide. It'll have gull wing leads. These are leads that, that kind of come out and dip down and then come out again. Um, so those gull wing leads um, are going to be 1.27 millimeters apart. Um, that's what's called lead pitch, is how far apart the lead pins are. So SOM is a small outline medium package. So it has the same um, uh, pin lead pitch but it has a wider body. So the SOM bodies are 5.6 millimeters wide. And SOL um, is not shit out of luck. It's uh, the small outline large package. Um, and this is the widest body. So originally the SOL standard um, uh, was for a 7.62 millimeter wide body. Um, but now that term has been used to encompass larger bodies as well. So anything that's 7.62 millimeters wide or, or larger width is going to be considered SOL. And SOJ or SOLJ or SOMJ, adding a J to the end um, just means that the components, instead of having the, the goal gull wing leads that we talked about will have J leads. And these J leads are exactly that. They're, they're formed uh, as a letter J um, where the, the curve of the J is hooking underneath the chip. So VSOP are very small outline packages. Um, these have a, densi uh, a high density um, uh, of um, leads. So that means that it can have a lot of leads tightly packed together. And those are typically 25 mil or um, I think there's a typo here. It's 0.635 millimeters 
um, apart. And for those that don't know, mil um, is the imperial standard, and that stands for thousandths of an inch. Um, and then millimeters, obviously, the metric. Um, so they're very close together, um, but they are gullwing leads. Um, and the body of a VSOP is typically um, 300 millimeters or, or, or 300 mil or uh, 7.62 millimeters wide. Now, sometimes VSOP and SSOP are interchanged, and it may not always be interchanged correctly. Um, that's because they're very similar chips. So the SSOP chip, um, which is a shrink small outline package, um, has the same type of high density um, uh, lead pins that the VSOP does. So they're 25 mil or 0.635 millimeters a apart, and they're gullwing leads. Um, the only difference between VSOP and SSOP is that the SSOP has uh, a smaller um, case width. So its width is only 5.6 millimeters wide. Then QSOP is a quarter small outline package. This, um, it, this has the um, same body as an SOP um, with uh, um, leads that are uh, 25 mils or, or uh, 0.635 uh, lead pitch. And now the next two, TSOP and TSSOP, are also um, two terms that get confused quite often. And um, this is the thin small outline package or the thin shrink small outline package. Both of these have a very low profile body. They stand only one millimeter high and they have a body width um, that will determine which term uh, we use. So the body width of 300 mils or 7.62 millimeters um, or larger um, is the TSOP package and body width of uh, 300 mils, 7.62 millimeters or smaller are the TSSOP package. Um, both of these packages have very high density fine pitch leads. They're 19.7 mils or only 0 0.5 millimeters apart. Um, that is the tightest um, packed leads of the SOIC um, package families. So as we just demonstrated by the table on the previous slide, we know that these small outline ICs come in a variety of package sizes and lead pitches and densities, um, uh, lead densities. So when working with these components, it's very important to RTFM. You have to read the manual, the specification sheets to ensure that the, the chip that you're working with um, is going to be compatible with your pro project because um, even uh, two chips that may seem similar that have the same pin count um, may have a body size that's just a millimeter difference and that's enough to push the chip off of your solder pads on your PCB if you've uh, miscalculated. So what we have here is some drawings to, to the left here that show the different um, uh, type of pin densities and the different um, shapes of these packages. And so you can see where like a an SO or an SOP chip uh, typically typically has between 8 and 16 pins. Um, uh, but the when you get down to the VSOP chip, it could have up to 56 pins. Um, so based on your application, you're going to want to uh, make sure that you read the manual and make sure that um, your PCB is attuned to whichever specific package you're working with. So next we're going to talk about the SOT packages, that's the small outline transistor packages. Um, a small outline transistor is a whole family of uh, small footprints um, that are uh, were originally done for discrete surface mount transistors. I have seen these used um, for some diodes and for other components as well, but um, the, the standard is for um, surface mount transistors. Um, so the most common are the SOT23 variations. So the nomenclature for SOT components is a little different than what we just looked at for SOIC. So SOT is going to have 
um, a serial number, which um, refers to um, the JEDEC standard. Um, and so there's a specification number in that standard for each type. And then it's going to have, it, well, it may have a, a optionally a dash variant. So dash variant is of that standard. There might be multiple variants. Um, and that's where we get like the SOT 23-3 is the three pin variant of the SOT 23 standard. So several F, uh, different SOT specifications um, can use the same basic body shape, but with slightly different dimensions. Um, so for example, uh, if we look at the SOT 233 here, it has three pins in this configuration, but the SOT 323 and the SOT 416 also use a three pin configuration that looks similar to this, but the distances between um, the, the uh, pin and the end of the body or between the two pins here, they're going to be different. Um, so an SOT 23 is going to have a certain distance between the two pins on the bottom, and it's going to have this um, uh, th uh, third pin a certain distance away from the edge of the body. 323 and 416 are going to have different distances. So it's going to be a slightly different shape, even though um, it's using the same um, general form factor. So that's important to note, even though I'm showing pictures here without um, getting into the actual um, standard and knowing what the, the distances need to be for all of these measurements. Um, it's hard to tell just by looking at this, whether it's a 23.3 or a 3.2.3 or a 4.16. So it, it's important once again to RTFM, uh, read the, the spec sheet for the, the devices you're dealing with so that you know the exact um, footprints um, when you go to put these onto your circuit boards. So let's talk about PLCC. These are plastic uh, leaded chip carriers. So the, P the plastic body um, PLCC is the most popular one. Um, and what this is is a, a plastic body um, that is um, made up of J leads. So you can see in the picture here what those J leads are. They kind of curve up under the chip. Um, so they always have J leads um, and they're always 50 mils or 1.27 millimeter pitch apart. Um, there's no variation there with the PLCC. Um, and they commonly come available with anywhere from 18 to 100 leads. And they have leads on all four sides of the chip. And there are some alternatives to the plastic case. So we have ceramic um, uh, cases, and those are known as CLCC, and metal cases, which are MLCC. Um, they're less common than the PLCC plastic ones. Um, and all of these are designed to fit into IC sockets. So I have a picture of a socket here. So basically you would solder the socket um, to your circuit board, and then you would plug the chip into the socket. So now we're going to look at the QFP or quad flat pack um, surface mount package. Um, QFP is a very popular IC package. It has gull wing leads that vary in pitch from as small as 12 mils, that's 12 thousandths of an inch, um, or 0 0.3 millimeters, um, all the way up to 50 mils or 1.27 millimeters pitch. Um, they're commonly available anywhere from 32 leads to 304 leads. And they come in uh, several sizes and body materials. So um, we have a few examples here, but there's quite a few that we're not listing as well that are less popular. So the QFP being the quad flat pack um, is the general term for, for a number of these. The PQFP is a plastic bodied quad flat pack. Um, CQFP or surquad is a ceramic quad flat pack. And the M quad is a metal quad flat pack. Um, and then another thing that is uh, used quite a bit that um, uh, tends to be used on, on um, circuits where 
uh, chips might come into contact with other devices and you want to protect the leads is we have the BQFP, the bumpered quad flat pack, because it has bumpered corners that help protect the leads um, from anything banging into them or um, or even just in transit uh, before they're, they're manufactured onto a circuit board. And so we have pictures here of um, a, a PQFP uh, as well as a BQFP. And now we're going to talk about how do we work with these? How do we solder them onto the PCB? So the, the typical method of soldering surface mount components to the printed circuit boards is using reflow soldering. Um, the reflow soldering process involves applying a solder paste. This is different than um, your typical rosin core solder that you would use with a traditional soldering method. The solder paste is a sticky mixture of powdered solder and flux. And we're going to add that to the PCB component um, just on the contact pads where we're going to place the SMD components. So once we place those onto the pads, the sticky solder place usually holds them into in place. And then we're going to evenly heat them using controlled temperatures at different times um, that cause the solder paste to eventually reflow into a molten state, which creates a permanent solder joint. So you'll notice the chart here on the right gives an example of that. And based on the solder paste and the components you're using, you may need to um, adjust times and temperatures. Um, but basically, you're going to ramp up the heat slowly um, to get it to um, what's called a, a preheat temperature. By heating all the components and, and the board um, before getting to the high temperature that's going to reflow, um, this is getting those components ready to take higher heat without having damage. Um, because if you just were to apply very high heat all at once, it could damage surface mount components. So then you're going to ramp up to your peak temperature that is going to allow the solder paste to reflow, and then you'll cool down over a period of time. So while this heating process usually takes place in a specialized oven called a reflow oven, it can also be accomplished with any heat source that can have temperature predictably controlled in short time frames. Um, it's also possible to use a hot air solder rework tool um, that uses hot air to uh, uh, apply specific amounts of heat um, to specific areas of a PCB or even to a specific SMD component, which will reflow the solder um, to either initially solder that component onto the board or to replace a bad component. That's why it's called a rework tool. Now, it is also possible to use traditional soldering methods on surface mount technology. Um, when the, um, the size and shape of the um, surface mount component allows for it. So based on um, the skill of the person doing the soldering and how small or what the shape is of the surface mount component, um, it may be possible to use a traditional soldering iron and um, your traditional rosin core solder. Um, so the choice of how small is too small, it really comes down to you. Um, and when you're, you're soldering, um, how good you are at not bridging solder pads. So some of these solder pads are going to be very close together. And if you're good enough to get solder on those pads without bridging over and bridging two pads together, then you can probably use a traditional soldering method. Um, when I'm soldering SMD components using an iron and solder, um, I find it easiest to accomplish by first applying the solder um, to the PCB contact pads. So th this picture shows that we're just applying a small amount of solder to the contact pads. Then I'm going to hold the SMD component with tweezers onto those uh, contact pads, and then I'll touch the iron to the contact pads while I'm holding the, the component, which will heat up the solder and um, let it flow onto the component, onto the, the connection points on the component. That seems to be, for me at least, the easiest way to, to hand solder um, with traditional methods, the surface mount components. 
All right, so the last um, piece of this presentation is going to outline a simple project, and there will be a separate video um, on this for the B-Sides DFW conference uh, to work through a, a hands-on lab for this. Um, so this project is going to work with some SMD components, uh, specifically a resistor and an LED. Um, and then we're going to use these two components in a, in a simple circuit and attach them to a PCB using two different methods. So we're, we're gonna solder one of them to the board using traditional soldering methods, and we're gonna um, use the reflow soldering method with a hot air rework tool on the second component. This will demonstrate in, in the lab how we do both of those things. Um, since the focus of the lab is soldering, um, we're just using a simple LED blink code to test the functionality. So here's the circuit, um, and you'll notice that this, this circuit is calling out we're using 1206 uh, sized components. Um, other than that, it's a simple LED circuit on an Arduino. And here is what um, the, the circuit is gonna look like as we solder it onto the board. This is a board that we've used in several of the, the B-Sides Hardware Hacking Village Labs. Um, so I've tried to gray out uh, areas that we're not using. What we're doing is connecting up a wire um, from one of the um, uh, digital pins that are on the Adreno, um, and we're bringing it down to this section of the board, which allows for the 1206 uh, surface mount component pads. So we wire it here, and then you can see we have, uh, there's a, a close-up picture, um, a 220 ohm resistor that has been soldered onto the pads. And then we use a jumper between these two connections. And then we have our LED, um, which is a 1206 LED on those pads. And then we jump it over to the common ground rail. And like I said, the, the code is just the simple LED blink code. This, was, this lab is more about um, getting used to working with the, the SMD components and soldering them onto the board. And if your LED does not blink when you apply that code, then you know you have to troubleshoot those connections, specifically the solder points on the 1206 pads. And that is the end of this presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. And if you're interested in walking through that lab where I'll show you how to solder those, those components on, um, that lab is uh, the Hardware Hacking Village Lab uh, number eight. Um, so you'll find that video following. Thank you.